good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Saturday. Yes, it is already Saturday, and I know I've been very latent on my update videos. I do sincerely apologize. Thank you so much to all my new subscribers, as well as my faithful subscribers who've stuck around despite my little intermittent absence from Tuesday up until now. There have been a plethora of updates that I want to jump right into. However, I will go ahead and say the typical trademark line. If you do enjoy this content and you do enjoy this new update video, please like, share, and subscribe at your earliest convenience. I'd really sincerely appreciate the continued support, especially with the Atlantic misbehaving. There's a lot of activity out there since I've been gone that we got to catch up on. As you can see, we're starting off on the National Hurricane Center page. Pretty traditional for Weather Center Nazario. This is now, I believe, episode six in the making. We're gonna get through this pretty quickly. However, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight with my Epic Pen tool, the primary entities I like to focus on are going to be our invest area, approaching the southern tip of Florida, just north of central Cuba at this time, messing with the Bahamas, as well as our newly highlighted Invest 90L. These are going to be our wild cards out there for the tropical basin, especially 90L. There's some pretty significant changes and adjustments that a lot of the model platforms both on the operational realm and in the ensemble realm that have been doing with this storm including the NHC. I'll clear my ink and I'll give you a bit of a background on this using this chart. So initially this feature was neck and neck with our 99L over the MDR which is really losing the battle in terms of which system is going to really intensify. The eye or the center of circulation is very heavily exposed. The convection I believe last time I looked at the satellite both visible and infrared is very heavily sheared off to the south and eastern quadrant so she's for all intents and purposes hemorrhaging energy right now so I don't foresee this system continuing on for at least another couple days. I think by the time we roll in to next week it's going to be gone for the most part maybe just a remnant area of tropical moisture but anyways initially nhc was pinging a very similar track with this feature a little west northwest and then a tug to the northwest very similar of 98l just upstream then from there i'll switch the coloring of my ink we fast forward a day or two i've been watching trust me i've been watching we've started to see a bit more of a west-northwest track over time, maybe somewhat favoring a northwestern curve as time went on as it got towards the Antilles. Now, as you can see, conditions are a bit more favorable for it. We have a greater chance that we'll see development not only within the next 48 hours, but up to 40% now over the next week, and it's going to continue to transition west-northwest into the Central Caribbean, where conditions are a little bit more conducive for some development from the system. Uh, on the next page, I'll show you a little bit more of the high-res information on this guy. We've definitely seen some rapid development in the thunderstorm complexes near the center of circulation over the last 24-36 hours. Last couple days being in such close proximity to our 99L really didn't have a chance to delineate itself, to dissociate itself from the ITCZ as well as our 99L. They were at a battle of wits or fisticuffs on who's going to draw in more of that atmospheric energy and now we finally have a clear-cut winner and unfortunately 99L is falling apart literally as I make this video. I'm not going to stay too long on this page. We'll go over to the current information here on Tropical Tidbits. I love when we get invest areas because we get all this high resolution information. You can see just by glancing at the infrared here, there's an abundance, an abundance of thunderstorm activity. It's very healthy. It's breathing. There's some cyclonic curvature around the center, so it's definitely moving. It's definitely working. It's definitely bubbling up. Uh, on the next couple panels here, you can see this is our 12Z model guidance. This is very interesting. I want to emphasize this. That's why I want to take this episode of Weather Center Nazario to really talk about this, because this is, I call, Mother Nature's ace in the hole. This one's going to be very particular, because typically we don't see such a dramatic shift to the east like this kind of goes against the traditional law of physics with these rotating storms it's going to be on the weaker side so even if it were to interact with environmental stimulus in proximity to it it wouldn't cause it to disrupt the path like this it's almost running into a force field it's backpedaling against itself the the climatological route these storms typically take once again, I'm going to do a little doodling, just so you guys get the big picture. We've been out of the game for about four or five days now. Again, we were anticipating a more northwesterly track to the north 
of our Antilles to the north of all of our Caribbean islands. As you can see, we're in pretty good model consensus, at least for the first 72 hours, that she's going to track off almost due west, west-northwest over the next few days, and that's when things get a little bit hairy. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, we have a trough coming in off the continental United States with an associated surface front that's very supported by the polar front jet up at two, three hundred millibars. And I think that's what a lot of the models are giving us whispers of that's going to pick this storm up and hike it north away from any major impacts in terms of after it further intensifies. Because right now we're just looking at a rainmaker. A lot of the models, especially the good old European, is calling for it more or less to be just an organized spinning disturbance. We may see some development in terms of a depression over the next 48, 72 hours. Uh, the models have been back and forth on that. The Canadian and the Icon the German and Canadian models have been very consistent and persistent with this feature undergoing depression cyclogenesis and we do get a numbered system out there as it really gets into Caribbean waters. The Euro and the GFS have been all over the place. Typically we don't see that with the Euro. The GFS is GFS. It does very fascinating things is how I'll describe it. GFS in the most recent one, which I'll take you through, has definitely intensified and is actually predicting a hurricane north of Dominican Republic Hispaniola over the extreme eastern Bahama Islands, so we may have to watch that going forward. The Euro once called for a tropical storm low-grade hurricane, and now we're back to just a heavily disoriented, easterly loaded or easternly loaded disturbance, if not very, very low-grade depression. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide before I get too wrapped up. This is looking at the GFS ensembles. As you can see, there is a bit of discontinuity. We have some pulling it due north, and then others want to continue on that westward track. Very typical of a system that works its way into the Caribbean. And then finally, we'll go over to the intensity models. These are good to look at. Don't take this as the end-all be-all, but it's nice to see that we are in fair amount of agreement that we're going to see at least a depression out of this. Uh, at the point we get a depression, at about 12 to 24 hours from now, that's when things get a little bit more difficult. As you can see, we are seeing some models that are thinking this is going to dissipate over time. But there are some that also indicate at least a modest tropical storm as we go over through the next five to seven days. So let's transition over to some live data. This is our current infrared satellite loop. I'm not too sure why there's a little bit of latency in the loop itself. Let me go ahead and... As a matter of fact, it's still switched to visible and shortwave. I wanted to look at the visible satellite to see if there was an identifiable center of circulation, especially as we get this wraparound moisture near the, uh, the center. But as you can see, especially at the back end of the loop, I'll go ahead and push pause. You can see that there is a fair amount of convection. I'm not sure why it's cooperating, guys. Let's go ahead and just roll with it. There was a fair amount of convective flare-up overnight yesterday, and I think that's what's helped to induce a bit of further cyclogenesis with it. We're starting to see some deepening. We're starting to see some cyclonic curvature all throughout the atmosphere up close to 500 and even 300 millibars. It's still reminiscent of a more aggressive tropical wave, but there are some southerly winds beginning to wrap around this vortex. So it's breathing. It's healthy. You can definitely tell that there isn't a whole lot of environmental factors that are impeding any kind of development. We've got good, healthy thunderstorm activity, which is good in terms of its overall well-being. It doesn't seem sheared apart. It doesn't seem like it's interacting with very strong upper level winds. All the thunderstorm complexes seem to be firing off in sporadic nature, typical of a disturbance, but it doesn't seem like it's being ripped apart or having to struggle to inhale because of the dry air around it, which has been very, very symbolic of 2023. All right, let's switch over to some model data. This is GFS for 12 Zulu today. I'm going to quickly scroll through. We're not going to spend too much time on GFS. But as you can see, we have a full westward trek into about maybe the central eastern Caribbean, just due south of Dominican Republic, and it very rapidly intensifies into a tropical storm as it makes landfall and moves north, due north, and then very quickly deepens into what is very reminiscent of a low-grade hurricane before undergoing rapid cyclogenesis into a potential cat 2 low grade cat 3 i don't take this anywhere near, i take this at about 10 15 percent realism gfs has been all over the place it's been all over the place for quite some time now this is just a nice first glance at what the models are pinging on especially in the operational realm I'm going to quickly segue over to our Canadian model. The Canadian model, as well as the Icon, as I mentioned previously, have been extremely consistent with what wants to go down. So, we'll start from the beginning, the Cardinal Hour. This is near about, 
live time. Okay, now this is a little further into the future. This is 30 hours out, about a day ahead. You can see we have some organized precip activity in a closed isobar near its center of circulation. As we track through time, this model platform also wants to deepen it and increase its intensity as well as its convective activity indicated by all the shades of green and more intense colors around both sides of the storm. So we're definitely going to get a closed low within the next 24-30 hours. It'll be very key as to when this happens that'll dictate how much of a, a different path it decides to take. And once again, in agreement with what we've seen with the ensembles and the last couple runs of the operational models, we're looking at a very sharp northerly turn before deepening and becoming a hurricane as it moves into the central Atlantic. Then this, this has been very particular. I'm going to highlight this. A lot of folks aren't talking about this. We have about, I want to say, between 12 to 15 runs of the CMC highlighting some sort of a tropical entity coming up from the Pacific monsoonal trough due north over Central America. It's going to interact with those land features. There's a plethora of mountainous terrain out there that's going to shear it apart at first, but the South and Central Caribbean are really conducive for development. Got good upward vertical motion, modest shear, very low shear, and you can see that there is an abundance of moisture out there. So the ingredients are in play. We've been seeing this on the Canadian run in about the same area, the same place with the same anticipated window of movement up to the north and northeast across Cuba, potentially skirting the coast of southern Florida, the Bahamas, since the 15th, since Tuesday the 15th, I believe, either at 0 or 12Z. So very good run-to-run -run consistency. That's honestly exquisite run-to-run -run consistency for the CMC and before we continue on, I'll switch over to our Icon model because now that the Icon doesn't go out as far, it's more of a mid-range model, you can see that despite being on the opposite end of the Yucatan Peninsula, it's finally picking up on a 1,003 millibar low. That's finally showing itself on the Icon. Previous model runs have also hinted at some vorticity working its way up from the monsoonal trough in the Pacific side over Central America. Now the big determination over the next few days is if and when this energy makes it over that landmass and where it decides to unveil itself. As I mentioned, I'll keep that circle there over our 1,003 millibar. Possible tropical disturbance could even be a depression if it decides to show itself earlier than not. I'll switch over to our red pen. This entire area, if we were to look at the upper level environment, is rather favorable for some sort of cyclonic development got good upward vertical motion, good low level, mid level, and even upper level moisture. The dry air that's been over the central parts of Atlantic have not made it into this area, at least not to the greatest extent that we've seen elsewhere in the MDR, Eastern Caribbean, Central Atlantic, you name it. So that entire area is primed for some kind of tropical development. We'll see. We have two fairly reliable model platforms showing great consistency, persistence in developing something without a whole lot of significant deviation that we've seen from the likes of the GFS and even the Euro to an extent. Uh, the UK model, which I'll switch over to here in a second, has also been highlighting something out there. Let's go ahead and let it buffer, guys, but once it does, you'll see that there have been faint whispers, I'll say. This is the 19th at 0Z faint whispers of something down in this general region. Pay close attention here, right in through here. That's the easternmost extent of the Pacific monsoonal trough, we'll say. There's our disturbance expected to push across the Gulf, and here's 90L. I'll go ahead and erase those two X's just so we can fixate on what happens down in the southern Caribbean. Let's go forward through time. This is three days from now. And as we go forward, you can see some of that moisture begins to pull north. There it is. Again, nothing really significant, nothing crazy, but the UK model is fairly reliable. This is towards the end of the run, but as you can see, the monsoonal trough loses a lot of its energy, and now we have something here resembling a bit of a spin in that precip field as it works its way north towards Jamaica and Cuba. So, worth mentioning, great consistency across a few different operational model platforms. There have been some ensemble members that I will save for another update video later on towards the end of the day today, once we get our 12Z Euro members in as well, that I'd like to present to you guys that highlights something coming up from the Pacific into the Atlantic AOR. All right, and before we wrap up this latest episode, I wanted to shift gears and show you guys what the current models for the Saharan dust are looking like because they are definitely transitioning from what we've seen throughout June, July, and early August. And we're finally seeing this cap begin to lift across much of our basin. Let's scroll through time. This is where we sit right now. As you can kind of see, I'll touch base with it really quickly. I'll use my pen. 
yellow ink so you guys can see. Over the Caribbean, we're seeing a lot less density with our Saharan dust. Over the Western Atlantic, we have a good plume here. The MDR is smothered pretty much to most of its extent. Got a little bit of a circulation that the model wants to pick up on coming across the Eastern MDR, which is probably our 98L according to the timestamp. It would make the most sense. Now, I'll go ahead and erase and go through time very quickly. We're not going to spend too much time here. So, going forward, going forward, going forward, you can see that the dust is still out there, but you can see, almost like magic, completely is erased. Now, again, this is a model. This is 24 hours ago, or the 19th at 0Z has not fully populated. I'm not too sure why, but you can see that pretty much the entire Atlantic area has been evacuated of a lot of significant dust, which is going to relieve the environment of a lot of the dry air, that dense dry air that suffocates, that asphyxiates the life out of a lot of these tropical entities, regardless of intensity. It could be a major hurricane, and the dry air is never good for any further cyclogenesis to happen. So we'll see what happens as we go into very end of August, early September. Things could quite frankly amp up a little more than we've already seen. I know the CMC down the road wants to continue to pump off circulations off the African coast. We've seen whispers of this as well with every Euro run as well as every GFS run. Dare I say it, it's out there. It looks like we're finally starting to see peak hurricane season come to fruition, guys. So with that being said, there's an abundance more information I'd like to present to you, but I'm not going to exhaust it all for one long-winded video. I'm going to space it out, especially since I have a lot to catch up on and a lot to keep up with as we go over the next couple days and into the mid to late parts of next week to see whether or not we get a southern or western Caribbean entity spin up out there. Conditions are favorable. I talked a lot on 90L. I want to touch on a little bit more of that invest area that's moving through the Bahamas right now that's actually going to up our rain chances right now outside the window. It looks like fair skies, but later on today I would assume thunderstorm coverage is going to rapidly accelerate for much of southern and central Florida. So I'll bring you guys a little bit of increased content on that. This is going to conclude episode 6 of Weather Center Nazario though guys. I want to take a second and shout out Weather Girl Danny. I really, 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 really appreciate the shout out on your earlier update today. That definitely made my Saturday a lot better. Thank Thank you to all of her faithful subscribers who have trusted me enough to hit the subscribe button. And thank you to all who have discovered the page in recent couple of weeks. It's been really nice connecting with you all, talking to different individuals who are just as passionate about the weather community as I am. I really look forward to additional collaborations going down the line, especially once we get a few more interesting things coming on the horizon line that we can start to engage on and talk more about. But without further ado, here comes that iconic concluding line. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.